Revolution came with the more modern style rear hub carriers that you would see on uh, the RB5 and the ZX5 and the RB Type R uh, buggies. Um, so again, I got to check to see if the ZXS was the last laser to come with the older style laser hub carriers or if it actually came with the more modern ones um, and these are just what the previous owner had replaced them with for some reason. Um, oh yeah, we got these little spacers too. I'll put those in here. Keep forgetting about those. And right, the dog bone pins. Oh, there is a bit of wear on them, you can tell. Because one side here is shinier than the other side, for sure. So yeah, those are worn. Okay. Well, if it's going on the shelf, all I really gotta do is clean it, but anyway. Alright, so the easiest way to deal with this would be to just take the gearbox off and then work with what's left. So I could just separate the chassis from the gearbox and then just tear this whole thing apart. a bit of a side note, this is why I really enjoy vintage four-wheel drive buggies more than any of the other vintage classes because, I mean, really a lot of the vintage stuff is super cool but I think the four-wheel drive buggies are especially cool because they are so much more variant in their design choices you know, like you could look at, let's say, an RC10 Worlds car and a Losi Double X and think, okay, those are clearly very different, but technically they're different generations of car. Right? The Losi Double X was a computer designed car. The Worlds car was not. It wasn't until you got to the B2 where you started to see Team Associated use similar techniques that Team Losi used um, in their design. But even then, like, you know, those those two buggies, the B2 and the double X, are kind of similar, you know, in terms of, like, what they use and the geometries and everything. But you can pair a Schumacher Cat to a Yokomo YZ10 to a Kyosho Laser, and they are pretty different. And they're just complete design philosophy and how the parts go together. And that's what makes them so interesting is they each had something they were trying to accomplish, something specific, and they went about it in a very different way. And lucky for you guys, I can afford all this shit. <laughs> and I can walk you through it as best as I know how to. Alright, so... Yeah, why do they keep using these Phillips screws? Alright, let's... Um, well, for now, okay, we'll leave that intact for now. I'll just put that there. We got some blocks. I'll put that block in there. And then we can start ripping this apart. How much do we want to do this tonight? Well, let's see. It's getting late. Let me at least take this off. Actually, this is kind of interesting. If we look at um, the the bearing placements, so you may remember from the ZXS Evolution uh, uh, restoration that um, I found these uh, roller bearing setups to be kind of a pain because you had to put in, you know, this roller bearing from the opposite plate, the opposite side. To, to connect, if you will, or to um, hold in place this belt 
and then this roller bearing that holds in this belt also comes in from the opposite side. So think about that for a second. You have a left and right motor plate using the right motor plate to run a shaft with roller bearings on it to hold down the left belt and then use the left motor plate to, to run to connect to a shaft with roller bearings on it to hold down the right belt. So as you're trying to put this together, right, you, you, <laughs> you kind of need like four hands to put the belts in place and put the roller bearings on there and tighten that all down. Um, that's, that's a real pain. And that's why I kind of went in the other direction with the ZXS Evo or instead, if I remember correctly, if I remember correctly, I actually have to go pull the car up. I put in, I may have skipped one of the roller bearings, maybe I skipped the top one, or I put it in from a different side just to make it easier to, to assemble. Um, and, you know, I used, like, different screws and different length uh, screws to set up the bearings in the right way. So, you know, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of how this is set up. It just seems... Like, I kind of get it. I get it. I get why they did that. You know, but even still, it just seems uh, a little silly. For sure, it's a little silly. That's 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 something that Schumacher would do. That's not something I'd expect Kyosho to do. Because Schumacher wildly over-engineers their stuff. As I've said many times before, for no real functional gain. I can get these little covers reproduced, right? You can get from Cantec uh, reproduction ZXS bodies with an under tray and a wing, but these little front and rear gearbox covers, uh, this is it. The original parts are all you get. Uh, you, you cannot, to my knowledge, get any uh, reproduced versions of those parts. So, you know, if, if you're out, then you gotta, like, sort of make your own, which I suppose isn't too bad you know like you can take you know scraps from Lexan cutouts of other bodies and try to like use a heat gun and maybe fold this up in a certain way and kind of make something work or just run it open like this that could also work I guess um, but yeah that's that's going to be one part that you will not be able to get unless someone has the original uncut mold of this that they are willing to send out for reproduction. It's a very esoteric part, so I think it's unlikely. Look at that. This can just... No, it doesn't drop out of the bottom because it's held in by this. Right. Okay, so... <laughs> I'm going to leave this where it is. But that diff also is in decent condition. It's not too bad. But of course, I will take it apart and clean it and rebuild it anyway. Uh, all right. So this is a whole other operation, and it's getting late. So I'm just going to leave this as it is for now and get back to it later. So uh, that was the initial teardown of the ZXS, and that's it for now. Thanks for watching.